Before installing the arc gas fitting into the rear housing, apply a small amount of Loctite number 242 to the receptacle. Once the arc gas fitting is hand tight, use a 7 16 wrench to tighten it in place. Once the fitting is installed, turn the rear housing over and place a number 10 o-ring over the protruding end of the arc gas fitting. Our next step is to install three o-rings and a gas injector on the middle insulator housing. The two smaller O-rings go into the two rear grooves on either side of the water holes. Next is the gas injector. On those gas injectors with four small holes, either the model 112 or 113, choose an area between two of the holes and mark it. To allow for more equal distribution around the diameter of the gas injector, this mark should be lined up with the area between the water holes. Finally, insert the third O-ring above the gas injector. Now we will install two O-rings into the front housing, one inside and one on the outside flange. The front cover will get two O-rings as well. There are three O-rings for the anode. The first goes on the outer diameter here. while the two small ones go into the counter bores on the side. Note that later we will be applying lubricant to the O-rings, but not to these two small ones. The final O-ring goes into the groove on the front face of the cathode holder. The majority of O-rings will need lubrication to avoid rolling, repositioning, and breakage. We will look quickly at those O-rings that require lubrication and we will point out those that do not need lubrication as well. To begin, place a small amount on the index finger and rub between the index and thumb so only a thin layer is applied to the O-ring. Both O-rings on the front housing need to be lubricated. Now apply to all three in the middle insulator housing, being careful to keep the gas injector lined up as shown earlier. Also apply to the O-ring on this side of the gas injector and on the inner surface in front of the water holes. Next is the anode. In addition to the O-ring, the surface on the rear edge is lubricated, along with the surface immediately behind the two small O-rings. But as mentioned earlier, the two small O-rings themselves are not lubricated. The O-ring on the cathode holder does not need lubrication, but the outer surfaces shown here do. These will come in contact with the O-rings in the middle insulator housing. Finally, both O-rings in the front cover need lubrication. The first step in the assembly is to fit the cathode holder into the back of the middle insulator housing, rotating or twisting it slightly to ensure a solid fit against the O-rings.
Next, slide the rear housing over the cathode holder, making sure the end of the arc gas fitting with the small O-ring fits into the arc gas hole in the middle insulator housing. At this point, you may wish to check the gas injector to be sure it is still aligned. Next, we will attach the front housing. Note the holes in the facing edge of the middle insulator housing. Line these up as closely as possible with the bolt holes in the front housing, positioning it so the water tube is opposite the Healy coils on the middle insulator housing. Now insert the four quarter twenty bolts. Use the driver to screw each bolt into place, but do not completely tighten them until they are all in. When all four bolts are completely in, it's time to tighten them securely. Place the cathode into the cathode driver with the threads out. Holding the assembly upright, carefully align the threads and screw the cathode securely into place. Earlier we discussed the alignment of the gas injector. At this point we will check that the line on the gas injector is pointing toward the arc gas inlet. This is not a precise measurement, but it should be lined up as closely as possible. Notice the two notches in the flange of the anode and the pin in the front housing. Either notch in the anode can be matched to the pin. When lined up, push the anode into place. You should feel it passing the O-rings as it snaps into place. Add a small amount of O-ring lubricant to the surfaces of the anode, preparing it for installation of the front cover. It is recommended that when putting the front cover on, don't immediately line up the holes. Instead, place it so they're a bit off, then twist the cover slightly into place for a tighter O-ring seal. Secure the front cover with the three smaller socket head screws using the supplied driver. Because the typical build consists of a single powder tube, we will install a powder port plug here. Now, on the opposite side, we will install the powder tube. Fit the tube as shown here. Then insert the two 632 socket screws and tighten them with a 764 Allen wrench. The assembly is complete.